Thank you for learning Siebel with the Siebel Hub. We have a unique, comprehensive and always up-to-date collection of Siebel CRM 2021 training classes. We can deliver live online and on-site training in the highest quality with the most experienced instructors. And we also offer a unique modular Siebel CRM 20 and 21 training. Follow the links in the description or on this slide to learn more and learn Siebel with the Siebel Hub. In this demonstration, uh, we will take a look at integration workspaces and how they affect the migration application and how we work with it. So we are in uh, Siebel Tools on a development database and we are creating an integration workspace. We call it int underscore test branch. Okay. So this is going to be a branch of main version five. And you notice the message that it will trigger seed copy, which is ha which happens every time when you create an integration workspace. And seed copy means literally that any workspace controlled seed data or application workspace data set is copied. So in 20.12 at the time of this recording, this affects list of values. So if we count, compare the count list of values before and after, we see that essentially the count has doubled now because we now have main and another integration workspace. So that is considered normal and as is necessary to keep the application workspace data separate. So we create another integration workspace as a release branch. Let's call it release 21 underscore one and make sure that the parent is the integration test branch. So this release branch would allow us to uh, separate development in this release from another release. Again, uh, this will trigger seed copy. So we now have a third set of list of values data in the database. And let's just verify the count. And yeah, it has gone by, up by another 55,000. So three times the original size because there are three main or integration workspaces. So now let's do some actual development work. So we create a development workspace under the release integration workspace. And we're just about to do some simple uh, modifications. So in the business component contact, we're going to add a new field And that field is pointing to a column, uh, which has been added as an extension column to S contact. So that was a schema change we migrated earlier. And now we're creating a, a new pick list on that field. So we decide to create an entirely new pick list definition. And we create an entirely new uh, LOV type and enter some values. So this is going to be an interesting test case for the integration workspace migration. So we have something we can check on whether the modifications have arrived or not. So finalize the pick list. Okay, let's just verify. Pick map has been created. And we have the new pick list. And let's see the new LOV type as well. 
just to make sure things are in order before we start migrating. Okay, there's our new list of values type and three values for it. So now it's time to checkpoint and submit and deliver that simple developer workspace. Okay, and that is going into its parent release workspace. So now regarding testing, uh, of course we could do, we could have done a unit test. We have spared that. And we could also run on the development server, we could run an object manager on that int underscore release underscore 21 underscore one workspace in order to have a integration tests object manager on that release container, so to speak. That is an option, of course, that we always have on development environments. But of course, we also want to have a real integration test environment where many releases uh, might come together before they are released to production. Uh, we are now using web tools to create uh, some more changes. So we are opening the integration workspace that allows us to create a dev workspace as a child. And in that dev workspace, we're going to do some web tools work. Uh, for example, uh, modify a list applet graphically. So this is just a demonstration, of course, and your mileage and your amount of changes vary a lot in real life. So the following just shows adding a new list column to the contact list applet. And best to do that by copying an existing list column maybe. And in this case, the MM field there, Mr. Mrs field is a good candidate because it's um, actually a pick list too. So it has all the necessary runtime settings. So we add our new field as a list column and change the display name probably. Just override it for now. Okay, once we have the new list column, we can go into the applet web templates and edit the edit list template, because that's the one that's used in the uh, vanilla views. And this is some work we couldn't have done in Siebel tools. Everything until now we could have done in Siebel tools, but the graphical editing is only available in web tools. So we go to find a free placeholder essentially and look up our new column. And let's just drag and drop it. Okay, new column is now mapped. So that should be good enough. And now let's go for a quick uh, unit test in the application on the development environment. Uh, let's inspect that workspace. Okay, so the uh, list column that we added is uh, not showing list, so we have to uh, use columns displayed. And there it is, new field. Let's just add it and uh, let's verify pick list is working. So list of values, etc. all that works together now. Okay, that should be fine. One more query to make sure the values are saved. Okay, so unit test is successful. The developer can now deliver these changes. So version first in web tools. And submit. 
and deliver to the release uh, workspace, the inter integration workspace to hold the release specific changes. Okay, let's speed that up a little bit. So uh, the changes are now in the release integration workspace. So the new pick list and list column. And now we are going to submit that to the integration test workspace. So it's parent. So submit and deliver. We'll make this available for, uh, let's say, integration testing. Again, notice that it has not yet arrived in the main branch, so it's just one level underneath. So we see the version one of the integration test branch has all the changes that we had in the release 21.1. So now let's um, talk about how to migrate this integration test workspace to a new environment. So basically uh, run a full runtime repository migration. And since we're using synchronous migration in this environment, we select dev and prod, and we make sure we select the integration test and the version that we want to export from the development environment and subsequently import into the RR environment. So you can always go back to this pencil icon, change that if you need. And notice that the application workspace data service and schema service are enforced for a good reason. So we can now execute that full RR migration plan. And we need to provide the target schema owner password. Okay, it's running and this will take a while. So we've been uh, speeding this up a little bit here in this video. So we see that schema service and uh, runtime repository export are running first thing in parallel. List of values export is quite fast. Notice it only exported 55,000 rows, so one set, uh, the set for this integration workspace. And also notice that in uh, the repository export, it exports explicitly what is in the integration workspace that we defined. And this is a runtime export only, so there's no design repository exported as usual. So a bit later into the execution, we see that the package has arrived at the target environment and the schema is currently being applied. And now we're already running the final seed import. So again, you can always go back here and uh, check the log files if need be. So now it has finished and we can go to the history table and see how long the execution took, if it's successful, check the log files. And in the target database, we now have the migrated repository. And now we need to do the naming shuffle. So we rename so that the old Siebel, the Siebel repository is now old Siebel repository and the migrated repository is now Siebel repository. So all that happened while the target enterprise was shut down. And we need to remove the old Siebel repository. So we run the are our cleanup utility. And always good to run it without arguments. So you get a list of arguments and you probably have a script ready at this point in time. So let's just quickly create the command line here. Uh, 
and make sure you delete the old Siebel repository. So we run RR cleanup with the B switch set to B. Actually, that means both, delete both RR and DR records. And that takes a while, so you can monitor database for activity. And once it has finished, you run it a second time. This time you append minus A yes to delete the orphan records. So that is a clean RR cleanup, so to speak. And now we can launch the production environment again. And the Siebel repository, as of now, contains, as we can just verify, contains a main version zero um, workspace. And it's still called main, despite the fact it is derived from an integration workspace. So that might be confusing. But once we get into the uh, contact list view uh, in the production or integration test environment, uh, we see that the new field is available. And so is the uh, list of values and all the functionality. So this is only available in the integration workspace. So this proves the point that we're really looking at the repository in the state of that integration workspace. So what we're going to do now is actually pull the watermark file from the production environment. It's just a temporary file that we use to prove a point. And we, when we open that file, so in the migration module, we talk about uh, the watermark files a lot. If you open these watermark files, it's all base64 encoded gibberish in two sections, literally. So we have copied the first of the strings, which is the IRR string. And if we use, for example, the JavaScript A to B function in a browser, we can decode it and we see that the workspace name indeed is integration test branch. So that is the original workspace name for that environment, despite the fact that the workspace is named main it knows its origin, so to speak. So whenever we do an incremental migration, it will now refer to that original integration workspace. So one final thing we have to do, because this is, has been a full migration, we need to take care of the tasks. Uh, workflows are good because we are on 20.12, but tasks need to be activated by running the Siebel Runtime Metadata Publisher Service in uh, full migration mode, as is documented in the Siebel Upgrade Guide. So this is a mandatory task after doing a full export.